Hey everyone, Dan and Eddie here from the Deathless Dogs, and we've come to the end of another allocation season, and maybe you struck out big time. Like we did. We kind of did. We didn't really pull down anything cool this year <laughs> in any of the raffles or anything we were in. Today's video is about not having the blues over that sort of thing. More or less thinking about those bottles that are great, that are available on every shelf, pretty much everywhere. Right. Stuff you should not be overlooking. I know it's it's cooler to have your stag and your whatever you can find, your B-Tax. With those bottles, a lot of times people get them and then they don't even wind up drinking them. They just sit on the shelf and like, oh, I have this, you know. It's a collector's item. These are going to be some picks for bottles you can find in your store that we're not saying are like better than allocated bottles, but are good and you should be happy. To be These able to bring them home. Bottles that'll get you by. First pick is just Old Forester Whiskey Row Series. Uh, I've got two of them here we just grabbed off the shelf. We've got all of them back there. But the Old Forester Whiskey Row Series is in pretty much every liquor store in America. There are four entries into it. The most popular of which being the 1920. 1910 is like their double oaked offering. Also pretty popular. I really like this bottled and bond one actually though too. The original batch, not my favorite, but still good between 40 and $60 in price across the series. So they aren't breaking the bank too hard. And really, you're gonna enjoy these when you yeah, drink them. They're good. I just kind of noticed actually, there's a bottle that I have that might be the same bottle design. About the same, maybe a little different, but very similar. Bell Mead. You see this stuff everywhere these days. If you want that rich bourbon, that very classic, right down Main Street, antique America bourbon. I can't speak for their entire line, but the Bell Mead Reserve right here is boss. MGP bourbon, it used to be a cask strength, now it's a regulated 108.3 proof. Really solid, drinkable, great flavor. We let this sit on our shelf for too long. Right, yeah. After buying, and we shouldn't have. We should have been buying more of this and trying the other offerings, which we will. We've talked about them before. We'll talk about them forever. The Redwood Empire core line. We're missing the Lost Monarch, which I'll just put Because here. it was so good that we drank it all. Yeah, this stuff in our area is sitting under $30 in a lot of stores. And it's for that price, it's stupid good. You've got your Emerald Giant Rye, your Pipe Dream Bourbon, and your Lost Monarch Burr Rye. Yeah, I mean, if we're doing MGP stuff, we'll keep it rolling with Penelope, yeah? We can't find it around us, but elsewhere around the state, I know you guys can. It's everywhere. Any store I've ever been to that I've bought Penelope at previously has it on the shelf every time I go there. And it's one that you should pick up. It's really, really good. Really good stuff. Yeah, again, MGP, it's a little younger. Some people try to throw a little knock on it for being a little younger, but honestly, the flavor on it is so good. They know what they're doing with the blending process. It's a four grain, which makes it unique to some other MGP offerings. And it's just solid. I've talked about this at nauseum. Knob Creek store picks. You go to a liquor store, you go to a grocery store. If you find that they have a pick, you should probably buy it because Knob Creek has a lot of commonalities in the flavor. You're getting some of that dusty wood elements. You're getting some of those peanut notes that come through with the Jim Beam line. But each expression, store to store, they vary a little bit, both in the age but also on the flavor. Yeah, they're all gonna be slightly different age, but they're all gonna come through at that higher proof point, that 120, so. Which is desirable. Yeah, I think regular Knob Creek is fine, but when you bump it up to that 120 proof, that's where it really shines. Yeah. This is a Knob Creek store pick, but just look for store picks in general. Most stores have them now, and you can find some great stuff in there. Some stores have a whole shelf just dedicated to all the picks that they've done. Our local, that this one's even from, Starks, it's like a whole section they got now, basically. Because yeah. they've been doing so many picks. But that's awesome. Because you find a store that has somebody doing picks whose palette lines up with you. It's like you've got a passport to just flavor town. That's a good looking lobster tail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand you one of these. And then I'll grab this one. We're going to put it up simultaneously. That was nice. Russell's Reserve, one of our favorite whiskeys of all time, probably. I can say that, right? Yeah, I mean, we're big wild turkey guys, and in the spirit of that, you know, readily available bottles that we're talking about, these two 
are pretty much on every liquor store shelf. This one is like on every yeah. liquor store shelf. You gotta find that everywhere. And then you got <laughs> even behind us, your 101 rye, 101 bourbon, rare breed. It's all good. It's all taste. It's all really good. It's truly the spirit of what we're talking about here, I think, lives in that wild turkey line. Final bottle here. 1792. This is a foolproof. You'll have your small batch. You'll have your bottled and bond. You're going to find these in pretty much every liquor store around the country, and they are solid. I've never had a bad time drinking a 1792. I've no. never regretted opening a 1792. Even the sweet wheat, which is my least favorite of the line, still like it, still will drink it. You won't seek it out, maybe, but you'll go back and buy different iterations of 1792. If I find another 1792 bottled and bond store pick, no brainer. That one's coming home. I don't You'd care where it's that from. More so than foolproof. Yep. Yep. I would. Those bottled and bond picks, because they're cheaper. That's the yellow label, yep. correct? Okay. The ones I've had just banana sit. Banana sandwich. In yeah. the words of Dane Cook, right? He said that. Wouldn't know. Don't listen to Dane Cook. It's been a while. Rightfully so. Yeah. But yeah, 1792 stuff, every shelf in America. They're going to have it. Look at this wall of stuff. This is like a liquor store shelf. You, this probably looks similar to a liquor store shelf you have seen. Right? I mean, I guess technically this would be over here. Yeah. But you know what I mean? These are going to be on shelves in your area. And you shouldn't feel sad about not getting those allocated bottles when these are available to you. They're a good consolation prize. Just because it's not something you can, like, flex on fucking Facebook or Instagram or, you know, take a picture of it next to your dick in your car, like, yeah, hey, <laughs> look what I got, you know? Just because it's not one of those doesn't mean it's not good. And then if you do post your pour online and somebody gives you shit about it, like, ooh, ooh, fuck them. Who cares, man? Yeah. Like, drink what you like to drink. I think finding good, readily available bottles that you enjoy is the key to being being happy with drinking whiskey. Yeah. The last thing you want is to have your like go-to favorite become unavailable. Allocated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's horrible. Like if Russell's single barrel somehow became allocated, I would be crushed. These are just some examples. There are plenty more out there. Let us know in the comments what are your go-to picks for that bottle that's always on the store shelf. Are there any of these that you disagree with on the table? If so, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely right. <laughs> Honestly, we don't give a shit. Uh, it's all personal preference. If you haven't done so already, hit the like button on the video and the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Because we're here every week drinking whiskey, giving you pointers, and being general dumbasses sometimes. You know, yeah, you, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. That's our list. Readily available bottles. There are... Ten. Impressive. Didn't even plan that. No. We didn't. <laughs> From the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Okay, yeah. Call up Guy sense. Fietti. You said Fietti? I always thought it was Fieri. No, it's Fietti. Because I don't really watch the TV show that he's on or anything. I only watch it in hotel rooms because I don't think it even exists unless you're in a hotel room. Probably on a cruise ship too, though. It's just a hotel on the water. Well, I didn't know that. I learned something new today. Yeah, the heat miser guy, Fietti.